Hey strangers, it's me. It's been about maybe eight months since I have posted a video and there has been so much going on in my life and I think that this is gonna be more of a movie because it's all not necessarily what's happening right now. So I'm gonna try to cover everything that's happened, sort of the transition in my life that I've gone through. Um, in this video I have so much so much amazing footage to share about our beloved province my beloved province of BC I'm no longer living in northern BC in Smithers I moved in November and you know so over about three months I did this massive transition and a drive that I think totaled about 60 hours in various parts of the province um, in all different climates going from when where there was ice and snow and treacherous roads through Banff and Jasper you know down to Vancouver Island where I am now in the southern part of the island to where it is uh, pretty warm <laughs> it's pretty damn warm my winter tires have been tearing up the streets um, so where do we begin here I do think it's important to give kind of a recap of, of just the events of my life that have been so tumultuous, um, you know, since, since my last video. Uh, so in my last video, I adopted Nika, I had taken on a third dog, and then I worked my ass off all summer. Um, I was living in a cabin and so, you know, I worked for the owners there and the summer was crazy busy and it was a heat wave crazy hot and I had my son with me all summer uh, so we'll pick up from there um, I went through a lot of personal stuff with my family um, you know uh, how do I even explain that uh, so there's just a lot of friction that happened and some really devastating news and um, and then after that my dad ended up passing away and so I had to deal with that and in November I had to get rid of everything that I couldn't fit in the car. So basically, like, and I live minimally, I lived minimally there in that cabin, right? I had sold everything because I was resolved to not nest in a place until it was my own and I owned it. So I was very, living very lightly in the cabin, but I still had accumulated quite a bit of stuff, right? So I had to sell all of that, get rid of it. This is like the middle of winter when winter is just starting up. Then I get a call that my dad is sick in the hospital in the ICU, you know, and then I was also dealing with uh, somebody very toxic that had come back into my life and was terrorizing me. Um, and so I had to move our life in the middle of winter, in the middle of all of this emotional turbulence. And so I, we packed up everything, <laughs> we packed up my three dogs. Uh, and my son and we took out we took off on a journey yesterday's history tomorrow's mystery but today is a gift that is why it's called the present journey and that journey um, included going through the the Banff and Jasper National Parks so that was the most beautiful drive of my life it was magnificent and nothing short of the word
So we traveled all through the Kootenays and you know, that was a beautiful drive, but also very treacherous. The semi drivers, I don't know what was going on, but that was really scary. There was a lot of reports of semis just driving really irresponsibly. So, um, so driving down the, through there was beautiful and I got to visit with some family briefly and, you know, stayed in a motel for a little bit and then, um, and then I got on the road again. And so this was also occurring when all of the flooding had just happened. And so all of these Southern highways, um, to reach Vancouver were not accessible. All the highways connecting the lower mainland and the rest of the country are shut down. To make matters worse, all rail service has also been impacted by damage to the line. No trains are coming to or from the Port of Vancouver. The only way that you could get to Vancouver was by taking the 99, right? Which includes the Duffy, which is this, uh, so I'll get to this in a minute. So aside from this, they were constantly shutting down the, um, this highway, the 99, and various other highways um, according to what the conditions were that day. And so there was a ton of rain that, that was coming in again, but they were worried that was gonna wipe out the, 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 the roads. And so they were sh shutting down these highways periodically, and I was actually stuck in, in Cranbrook in the Kootenays um, because it was shut down and I couldn't access it. And then all of a sudden, poof, it opened up, and I had this window, and I took it, and I made the 99 just in time because they were going to shut it down later that day at like four o'clock in the evening. So I get to Highway 99, the sun is starting to go down and the Duffy is this highway where <laughs> it's like, it's going up a mountain and it's coming down the other side, right? And so this highway is so cracked and narrow and windy you have to slow right down to like 10 clicks when you go around some corners because it is so sharp. Thank God I had the best winter studded tires that I could have bought for my vehicle, which saved me going through Rogers Pass, which saved me going through Banff and Jasper, and which saved me going down this crazy inclination on both sides. It's pouring rain, just an absolute downpour. This is like a, going through Lillooet, and I'm trying to find a motel for the night because there's no way that I'm gonna that I'm gonna continue. There's like rain warnings and stuff, so. I find, I, I stayed at the, um, what is it called? Is it called the Pemberton Motel? It's like this um, big hotel with just a bunch of little rooms that look like dorm rooms. And so, um, you know, the pets were allowed. He didn't ask any specifics about what kind of pets that I have, but it was so funny. Luckily, there was nobody in the lobby by the time I took my pets upstairs. But if you can imagine these three huskies just da dun da dun da dun up the stairs and so um me and my three huskies we uh we yeah we all got together in this little room after they were so good during the whole trip they weren't whining or anything it was awesome very well behaved and then the three of us were just chilling on my bed watching tv had a shower had a, got a couple glasses of wine and oh it was so nice just to chill out but yeah it was pretty funny and then getting them out in the morning the next day um, they were calling to lock down all the roads again and that was there was going to be a rain warning so i quickly zipped down the sea to sky highway down to vancouver which was actually really fun it's like a speedway you know you're just people are going so fast down that down that uh down that highway i make it to the Tawasan ferry terminal and i'm like oh my god i made it oh my god and so that's driving from smithers all the way through McBride to Banff and Jasper, all the way down through Radium, through the Kootenays, through Canal Flats, getting to Cranbrook, and then going all the way back up to Kamloops to get to the 99, <clears throat> to take it to the Duffy, to Pemberton, you know, down through Whistler, down to Vancouver, to Tawasson. I arrive on the island. <laughs> 
So there I was sleeping on the floor of my friend's basement suite. Um, and while I'm there <laughs> during this whole trip, my dog, Mayanna, is pregnant. So uh, I had made the decision to breed her with a, uh, a dog that I partly helped raise, a Canadian Inuit dog up north and uh, bred her before we left Smithers. So she was pregnant the trip and she was nearing the end of her pregnancy by the time I reached my friend's house on the island. And um, before she gave birth, uh, my dad ended up dying. So he passed away and I wanted to, I just, one of my favorite places on the island is Port Renfrew and I just felt like, let me just explain first that my happy place, what makes me the most happy, what I'm doing, you know, in life is whenever I am running with my dogs in the wild somewhere. <laughs> I know that sounds funny, maybe not a lot of people understand that, but you know, having both my dogs off leash and we're all just running free in the wild. There is nothing that makes me happier than seeing my dogs, <laughs> than seeing my dogs uh, run. <laughs> when they are happy and they're free, and life is so simple. Um, you know, ever since I was a little kid, I loved nature and I loved animals and, <laughs> and it just makes me feel like a little kid. So I wanted to go somewhere that was close, um, somewhere that was close to my heart and so that I could release my dad and sort of honor him. And, I f and I, I've always felt that the, the west side of the island, the ocean along there is so wild because all the waves are just crashing. And when I lived in Euclulet for a time, there was something that the, the locals had said to me that when you, you go to a place and you live in a place that's so wild, it has a way of drawing out all of the toxicity in your body, mentally, spiritually, physically. Um, and I completely agree with that. And I, I felt a, a huge purge when I lived there. And that's what I feel every time I go to places like Port Renfrew, Sombrio. Uh, in this case, I went to the Juan de Fuca trail in Port Renfrew. And um, there is such a power and such a pure, I would even say holiness, um, being along the edge of that side of the island. So I just wanted to go there and feel my own innocence, you know, and, and feeling like a child running with my dogs along the beach and release my dad there. So that was a very powerful day.
watched <laughs> and I watched the waves crashing and breaking apart, crumbling over the over the rocks in the way, the way they were dispersing and just watching it and the power of it and I just felt like I <laughs> I just felt like I released him there. raising puppies and that's been my focus for the past eight weeks and I have said it once before but raising puppies and even when my Anna was pregnant that whole process you know the birth and just spoiling her and feeling their movement in her tummy uh, and raising them and getting to know them um, <laughs> lots of love right now <laughs> have been some of the best memories of my life. She gave birth in um, my friend's place that I was staying in before we got the house. And, um, you know, lucky enough, we were able to secure the house right away. So we actually moved with the puppies, I think they were about five days old, into the bigger house and everything worked out beautifully. She had a 10 hour uh, delivery, birthing, right? So it was, wonderful she really worked hard though it was a very long process she started her labor pains early in the morning i go and wake up my roommate <laughs> i'm just like it's happening I'm, I'm seeing contractions i got to see myanna as a mother and how she was going to take on that responsibility and her instincts and watching that kick in and she did she did so amazing she did so wonderful like she is the best mom ever And it was so cool and close to my heart, I think, because, you know, Suhela, my other husky, is Mayanna's uh, mother. And then Mayanna herself was having a litter. So Suhela was so invested in Mayanna's pregnancy. Like, she thought that the babies were hers. She never left Mayanna's side. She was there day and night, you know, being the grandma, but just so invested in being there with her grandchildren and her daughter and it was i mean everybody knows i'm a crazy dog lady and these dogs are so close to my heart and uh <laughs> and they're like they're they're my best friends you know dogs really do go through everything with you
So there was one more trip that I had to make <laughs> before getting completely settled and that was to go and pick up my son again from the Kootenays. So I had to take the ferry over to the mainland. And thank God the Southern Highways had opened up. Um, what is the one? I think it's just Highway 1 that goes through the uh, Okanagan and through the valley. And, and that's the one that I'm most familiar with. I've driven that one like I don't know how many times in it. Um, oh wow oh i just thought of something else so there so after going through a soyuz there's like a little um viewpoint at the top where you can see the whole valley you can see the whole valley and you'd normally be able to see um all of a soyuz but there was this incredible thing that i got to witness and it was truly like it was a privilege to witness this because I felt like it was just one of those once in a lifetime things and the entire the entire sky the entire viewpoint was covered in clouds and fog with the sun shining in the back and it was so placid that it looked like a lake like there was some sort of fog it just across a lake it just looked like i was on the on the side of a lake and that was so stunning so just to summarize a little bit about the drive to the kootenays and back um you know it was kind of the same conditions <laughs> sometimes it was sketchier than others um driving at night is always a big issue for me I legally cannot drive without my glasses and I just am really sensitive to night driving. I find like oncoming traffic lights just really hard to deal with. I had to go slower. I remember like swerving into sort of a, uh, a shoulder, you know, that you're supposed to pull off in, um, thinking that it was the road. <laughs> so I was like, I need to pull over for the night. So I ended up stopping in Castlegar. I reached Cranbrook early in the morning. I stayed a night at my mom's place. I didn't have the dogs with me, thank God. My roommate was looking after them. Um, and I just, you know, spent a night playing Scrabble with my grandma and my mom, and that was really nice. And we left like 5 a.m. the next morning. Jordan and I just drove straight through. I was being very cautious on the way back, right? With precious, precious cargo <laughs> in the vehicle. Um, in total, you know, I think it was about 60 hours of driving, it, like that whole first trip and then having to go and retrieve Jordan, um, my son. We got back to the island and it was just, you know, <sighs> I finally, I did it. I made my move. I, you know, retrieved my son. Everything was sorted. We were in the house and it was back to being able to focus on the puppies. <laughs>
next sort of hurdle that I had faced <laughs> was my dog Suhela, my eldest. She um, did this funny thing where because she was so attached to the puppies, she was so hormonally invested, she was kind of experiencing a false pregnancy. And so because of that, getting into details here, her cervix sort of opened up, right? Um, and so she got an infection in her uterus. When dogs get pyometra, it is an infection in their uterus. She had to go in for surgery to have all of that infection cleared out and to uh, basically fix her, just to get, to get her fixed um, so it wouldn't be an issue in the future. And this is what I was planning on doing anyway. I just happened to have um, some personal viewpoints about fixing my dogs, you know, it, it's like, you know, I don't really treat my dogs the way that other people do. And um, to me, it felt like mutilating them in some way, you know, like I had dealt with their, with their heat cycle so many times before, and it was just really manageable to me. And so it just made me uncomfortable, but she healed up over time and all was well. So while everything has sort of worked out rather seamlessly, and it has, everything has kind of come together perfectly. I am, I am now in a wonderful place. I couldn't be in a better place in life right now, um, which is amazing. And I'm not ignorant to that fact, but anybody who's dealt with a, an extremely toxic person for a long time knows um, that the um, relational debris afterwards it's kind of, um, it's just, it's sort of, it's there for a long time, right? And you've got to do a lot of reprogramming, rewiring, because your self-esteem has been affected, your confidence, like your, your baseline of what normal is every day is so thrown out of whack. You're used to like high uh, stimulus environments, you know, um, where you're expecting to like fend somebody off or protect yourself or that something is going to go badly. Someone's going to rip the carpet out from underneath you. You know, there's all of this stuff that's programmed into our minds after dealing with somebody like that. So it's like trudging through the monotony of getting your basic needs met and not having that, your body in that, in that such a heightened state of cortisol all the time. So and it can fe it feels like monotony, right? It's like just step by step. <laughs> You're just getting through every day, you know, uh, being sober, being healthy. And because you're trying to reprogram what your baseline is and what your body is used to every day. So, you know, a lot of people don't understand <laughs> um, the reason why I have the bond that I do with my dogs. Um, they are so dear to me and I think you know when you're somebody like me who has had a rather challenging life and that's not to say that other people haven't but it it feels challenging to each person right their own their own life challenges or you know no nobody's life is sort of worse than another person's but um, circumstantially some people can just sort of be less lucky than other people and when you have been let down as much and uh, betrayed and hurt and just all the things that go along with having heavy levels of adversity in your life you gravitate towards people or animals <laughs> who are just unconditionally loving because so much of the time, these people who are like me are screaming out for acceptance and understanding and love, unconditional love, you know, for, for someone to just be there, for someone to listen. And <clears throat> I have been on my own a majority of my life sort of navigating everything by myself with no one to fall back on. and. A lot of the time, you know, in the earlier years especially, literally being completely alone 
in the middle of nowhere with no one to talk to, you know, and these dogs, my dogs have been with me through everything, literally everything, you know, they have just been there. And there is something about the Husky breed specifically um, that I really resonate with. They are individuals who have their own prerogatives and desires. They demand respect. You know, they can become resentful and rebellious if, you know, certain things aren't provided for. They're, they're wild, they're intuitive, you know, their happy place is, is being out in nature and being free. And so there's like a language that I understand between my dogs, Huskies, and I. And I have learned a lot about myself through seeing myself in my dogs. And I've noticed uh, I see a lot of my, my dogs' behaviors in myself, you know? And it is a tool for me um, in terms of understanding more of the depths of myself. And so they are very much a part of and have been a part of my healing journey and other times in my life where I've had to get over things just from being who they are. There is just something so special about having three generations <laughs> of my family, <laughs> of the, the ones that I've always been there. <laughs> 